Okay, guys. In this video, we will learn about isolation levels in transactions. Ever wondered what will happen if two transactions are running concurrently in a database, operating on the same set of records, and also at the same time? Well, the answer to this lies on the fact that what level of isolation does your database support? So, to start with, I would say isolation level helps us determine how two transactions would behave when run concurrently. But before diving in the isolation, let's first refresh our concepts on transaction itself. So, what is a transaction? A transaction is a collection of database operations, or we can say simply a set of SQL statements that are executed in a sequential manner such that either all the operations are successfully completed or none are successfully completed. Here we can see uh, the life cycle of a transaction. Uh, a transaction is started by a start transaction command and uh, is followed by a collection of statements that forms up the transaction actually. There is actually nothing as such of end transaction command. The transaction is ended by either using the commit command or by using the rollback command. The commit command tells the database that it needs to keep all the changes made to the transaction or we can say the changes made by the transaction itself. The rollback command on the other hand instructs the database that it needs to discard all the changes that have been made by the transaction. The figure here actually shows the life cycle of the transaction. So uh, it starts from the start transaction command itself. Then there are a set of 10 SQL statements. So once we have the start transaction command executed, we have our list of statements that we execute. Once we have listed all the statements or have executed all these statements, we finally end the transaction by using the commit command or by the rollback command. If we actually use the commit command, then all the changes that are made by these 10 statements would actually be preserved in the database. While if we will use the rollback command, then none of the changes made by any of these statements would actually be preserved. Another important aspect of the transaction that we need to remember is the locking mechanism. Any of the locks acquired during the course of the transaction is released only when the transaction has either committed or have rolled back. So be aware that if you are firing an update statement to update a record in a table, any of the locks acquired by that update statement would only be released when the transaction actually commits or roll back. This is a very important aspect of the transaction. And I want you guys to remember this. Now is the time we can dive in to see what is isolation. Isolation actually represents the I in the asset guarantees provided by the MySQL database. Isolation ensures that two transactions running concurrently keeps themselves isolated from each other and does not interfere with the workings of one another. The problem with isolation is that under the hood, it makes use of rigorous locking mechanism. In order to keep two transactions as isolated from each other as possible, so that the changes made by one transaction does not interfere with the workings of the other transaction. But this locking has a very high performance cost and it considerably reduces the performance of the whole database. Now, in order to solve this performance issue, the database developers decided to sacrifice the concept of pure isolation. And instead of providing the pure isolation as the de facto standard for the databases, what they actually did was they divided the isolation itself into different levels. So now there is nothing as zero isolation and pure isolation in the real life of transactions and the databases. Instead, there are different isolation levels from which users need to choose the best one as per their particular use cases. But one simple fact to remember here is that isolation is inversely proportional to the performance. So the higher level of isolation one desires, 
the lower goes the performance of the database so when dealing with concurrent transactions we need to ensure that we are actually choosing the correct level of the isolation just so that we are not sacrificing the on the performance too much in mysql there are mainly four levels of isolation here i have listed them in increasing order of the isolation guarantees that they provide first one is the read uncommitted this is the isolation level that provides the minimum level of isolation with the higher degree of performance of course second one is the read committed next is the re repeatable read and the last one is the serializable serializable is the one which actually provides the higher degree of isolation but is actually low on performance we will go in detail on each one of them in our upcoming videos here we have two concurrent transactions t1 and t2 operating on the same table that is the users table this users table contains three records each record is dedicated by a three fields id name and age so there is a record 1 which actually has a name of a and an age of 10 there is a record 2 that has a name of b and age is set to 0 there is a record 3 that has a name of c and the age is set to 0 now let's see what are concurrent transactions are actually doing now what our t1 transaction actually does is it has a start transaction statement at the beginning so the transaction gets started by this statement once it started what is actually doing is it's saying update user set age to 20 where name is b so what actually it's doing is it is actually updating this record and setting the age of the user b to 20 instead of 0 now it actually waits for a period of time before being committed so it executes the start transaction statement it updates the record of b to 20 and it waits before committing now let's see what our t2 transaction is actually doing t2 transaction actually runs the start transaction command so it starts execution now uh, seeing t1 and t2 we are uh, we can ensure that both the transactions are actually starting at the same moment so they have their start transaction at the same time okay but the t1 actually executes the update statement before t2 gets a chance to execute any of the statement so t2 after waiting for a while actually a uh, fire the statement to fetch the value of the record b so what it says is it says select age from user where name is equal to b okay and so t1 has actually updated the record set for the b and after that t2 has actually fired the query to get the uh, age of the record b so the question here is yeah so the question is will t2 see the age of b as 0 or b as or will it see the age as 20 okay now since these two are concurrent transactions it will actually depend on the isolation that we have that whether the t2 will actually see the age as 0 or will the it will will it see the age as 20 okay now mysql actually makes use of the repeatable read transaction isolation level if none of the isolation level is specified so in this case since we have not specified any of the isolation levels we can assume that it will make use of the repeatable read isolation level don't worry about what repeatable read isolation level is we will cover this in detail in our next of the videos and uh, we will have a separate video on the repeatable read isolation level itself okay so in this case since it uses the repeatable read isolation level which is actually the default isolation level and in repeatable re read isolation a transaction is not able to read the value of value updated by another transaction until that previous transaction has actually committed so in this case t2 will not be able to read the updated value of b and it will get the value of b as 0 so the answer will be t2 will see the age as 0 okay so we will close our video uh
here itself and we will move on to our next set of videos where we will see each of the isolation levels in much detail. So stay tuned.